Hello friends, we are going to start with a new topic now and the topic name is Moore machine. Let's get started. Now, moving on to Moore machine. If you remember the initial classification of the finite automata, we studied that there are broadly two types of finite automata. The first one is a finite automata which has final states but it does not produce an output sequence. The second time is the one in which there are no final states but there is a output sequence. The first type was broadly further classified into two types DFA and NFA which we have covered in the previous videos. Now we are moving to the next part of the chart where we are going to study the finite automata which produces outputs but there are going to be no final states. So remember for the next two machines the Moore machine and the Milli machine that we are going to study final states are not going to be marked. It is simply going to give us some outputs. So let's straight jump into the Moore machine and see what is exactly inside it. So I have over here in Moore machine, it is a finite automata which has no final states and it produces an output sequence for the given input sequence. So for any given input sequence, this machine is kind of going to throw some output. So that is how my Moore machine is going to work. No final state, but an input sequence giving a possible output sequence. The next and most important point of the Moore machine is, in Moore machine, the output symbol is associated with each transition. Make sure that you don't forget it. The output symbol over here is associated with each transition. Later on the next machine that you are going to study, the Milli machine, the things are going to be just a bit different from what I have written over here. That's the reason I have underlined over here each transition. Now let's go on to the mathematical representation of it. Now mathematically, a Moore machine is represented as M equal to Q summation delta del lambda and q0 where some of the things remain the same that is where i say my q is still the same which i call it as finite set of states my summation also remains the same and it is called as my input alphabet what is going to be the change is after this. Now delta is a term that we have never studied before. And the reason it being absent was the previous machines were not giving me output. If you observe they were saying me accept or reject but that was kind of an output for the user to interpret. Rather over here the machine is going to throw the output for each input symbol. Previously the output was thrown at the end. And that also was a rude way of looking at the output. But now here the machines are actually used for outputting. So for every input it is going to give me some output. So over here my delta is going to keep a track of that output. So I say delta is called as the output mapping. Okay. Then the next thing we have is the del function. Now del function is the same. It is also called as the transition function and the representation is still the same. Q cross summation gives you Q that is given a state and an input symbol. What is the next state? Going ahead, I have my lambda. Now lambda is something which is called as the output mapping. So now in output mapping, we are going to study for some kind of input, what output will be thrown by the machine. So for every state, there is going to be output associated and what output is associated will be decided by my output mapping. So I say, this is my output mapping. My delta is called as the output alphabet. So I say my delta is my output alphabet and this we say that whenever I say I have an input my delta is going to be something which will be the possible set of outputs.
so previously we had only input set now since the machine is basically used for outputting the output symbols are going to be stored inside delta moving down we have next called as the del now del is again the same del is called as the transition function now this transition function is nothing but q cross summation gives me q given a state and an input symbol what is the next state that remains the same the next one we have lambda now lambda is something which is new to us when i say lambda it is called as the output mapping so let me write it over here so lambda is called as my output mapping by output mapping i mean to say that given a state what is going to be the output for that particular state given a state what will be the output for that particular state if you remember the definition in more machine every state is associated with a output alphabet and that output alphabet we are representing with the help of the lambda function lastly we have after the lambda my q0 and q0 also remains the same which is called as my start state and q0 belongs to q so that completes the mathematical representation for the more machine having understood that let's proceed to the example so that we can get more details and more insights of this so let me consider a transition diagram like we considered in case of our dfa machine so the diagram is i have my q a over here as one of the states you can consider as q0 or simply as a or x y z whatever you feel like i have taken over here q a slash a hold on for some time this thing will become clear as of now just assume q a is a state and it is the start state similarly i have q b as one of the state and i have q c as one of the state there is a transition on one it goes over here on zero it goes over here zero over here on zero over here assuming on one it goes over here and lastly on one it is going over here so the diagram which is ready in front of me is called as a moore machine now let me explain you the diagram in detail so that we can proceed now if you observe the diagram with each state do you see a slash followed by some symbol like i can see q capital a slash small a q capital b slash small b q c slash c now what i mean to say over here is with state q a the output which is associated is small a that means if by any chance i happen to enter state qa the finite state machine that is the moore machine over here is going to throw me small a as the output similarly if by any chance i go into qb state i am going to get the output as small b and similarly for qc state the output thrown will be small c right now how to understand this diagram if you look for the start state qa we can see that qa is going to receive a input symbol zero okay as well as qa can also receive or give a transition on input symbol one so i say if i'm talking of the edge zero how i read it i say qa on receiving input symbol zero gives output a and goes back to qa i repeat qa on receiving input symbol 0 is giving output a it is initially giving the output and then it is going to some kind of state transition so if i consider the edge 1 which i just highlighted qa on receiving the input symbol 1 is going to give the output wait a minute it is not going to give the output b that's where you have to be careful in case of moore machine if the transition is coming out of the state q a it is going to throw the output associated with a and not with b 
So QA on receiving input symbol 1 is going to throw the output A and go to QB. Got it? So output is associated with each state. That's why we underlined it in the definition. Similarly, if I look at QB on 1, so I say QB on receiving input symbol 1 gives output small b and goes to QC. Similarly, if I look for QC on 1, QC on receiving input symbol 1 gives output C and goes to QA. Got it? So it is never, never, never going to give me the output associated with the next state. The output will always be associated with the current state. So that's how you read a Moore machine. Let's go ahead. Now I say, for representing the Moore machine, we had m is equal to q summation delta. Then we had del lambda and q0. So if I look at q over here, the states which I have are qa, qb and qc respectively. Going ahead, I can see that my input alphabet, my input alphabets are the one which are present on the arrows that is on the edges and the edges are simply 0 and 1. That's it. Going ahead, I have my delta. Delta is the output symbol and those output symbols will always be available in the transition diagrams in the state beside the slash symbol that is the machine can give the output as small a or small b or small c going ahead i have my del and lambda which i'll be representing it later i also have q0 and what was my q0 q0 was the start state and which we said that qa is the start state now let's go ahead to represent my del function so now we have the del represented as q cross summation gives you q. So I have my q over here, I have my summation over here, I have my state qa, I have my state qb and I have my state qc with me. Completing the table on input symbol 0 or 1, it is going to go somewhere or other. So if I observe the diagram, I see over here that QA on 0 is going to QA, QA on 1 is going to QB, QB on 0 is going to QB, QB on 1 goes to QC, QC on 0 goes to QB and lastly on 1 going to QA. That completes my transition function and it is really very easy because it is exactly like FSM, DFA, NFA functions. Going ahead to my output mapping that is the lambda function. So if you remember the lambda function was defined as Q arrow delta and how did we read it? Given a state, what is the output? So I see over here. I'm going to write what is going to be the output associated with state QA equal to. So QA has an output symbol associated what? I can see it in the diagram QA has been associated with output A. Similarly, lambda of QB turns out to be small b and lambda of QC turns out to be small c. That's how we represent lambda function. So in lambda, we are basically saying that with this state, this output is associated, so on and so forth. Going ahead to the examples now. So let's consider an example. So my example over here, I am considering I am in state QA because it is the start state followed by the number B1010. And here is something where I'll be writing the output of the machine. So that's where I'll be writing the output. And that's the catch where you have to be really careful. Now let's go ahead. I say QA on receiving input symbol 1. Observe the diagram or you can observe the table. A preferable notation for observing would be the diagram. Because that will make the things readable as well as the chances of getting the errors are going to be less in case of Moore machine. 
so i say q a on 1 q a on receiving 1 we know that it is going to give the output as a so don't forget you have to write the output first and then you do the transitions that's how this is going to be different q a on 1 is going to give the output as a and go to q b what i have left with is 0 1 0 QB on receiving an input symbol 0 goes to QB but before that it is going to throw the output B. So output is going to be B and it goes to QB again. So 1 0 is left with me. QB on 1. QB on 1 is going to throw the output small b and goes to a state QC with only 0 left for scanning now. Now QC on 0, QC on 0 throws output C and goes to B. So it is going to throw the output C and goes to B. And now I see over here that what is left with me on QB is nothing. So we expect the output of 1010 to be A, B, B, C. But Moore machine, frankly speaking, doesn't stop over here. The reason is very simple. In Moore machine, the output is associated with each state. So you can realize over here that currently I have landed in state QB. So since I have landed in state QB, unless and until QB throws the output associated with it, the machine will not stop. So the output associated with QB was B. So the machine will throw the output B and then only come to a halt. So if I say for the example 1010, what is the output? The output is A, B, B, C, B. One very important realization over here in case of Moore machine. I say over here that if the length of the input sequence 1010, if I call it as n and if I observe the length of the output sequence, that is always going to be n plus 1. Okay, so it is very important conclusion in Moore machine. The length of the input sequence is n and the length of the output sequence will always be n plus 1. So that completes the definition and the working of the Moore machine. See you in the next session of Millie machine. Thank you.